All right, hello everybody. We are gonna go through this concept check together, but before we do, I want you to pause your video and answer all the questions. Go ahead, pause it, come back when you're ready. All right, so now we're gonna go through them. The following are all fluids, water, milk, oil, and air. That sounds true to me because a fluid is something that flows and conforms to the shape of the container. I'm running out of room. All right, so that's true. All right, if you cut a piece of metal in half, the density will be half as much as the original piece of the metal, true or false? Well, let's look into that a little bit more. Let's say we had a density of some metal and it was two grams per cubic centimeter. That's not very dense at all. But, and let's say we had, say we had six grams of it. Okay, so we have six grams of it. That means the volume of this whole thing is three cubic centimeters. So six divided by three is two. Okay, and this is a V, capital V. All right, now if we cut it in half, well, the mass of this piece is gonna be three grams and the volume of this piece is gonna be one and a half cubic centimeters. Both the mass and the volume are gonna be half as much. And so the density is gonna be exactly the same. So density is an intensive property, which means it doesn't matter how much of the substance there is. Okay, an extensive property, well that is gonna depend on how much of the substance there is. Both mass and volume are extensive properties, but density is an intensive property. All right, next one, units of pressure. Well, we know that pressure is force divided by area, and so that has units of newtons per square meter or pascals. But is either one of those things equal to newtons per square meter? So let's see. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared and then divided by meter squared. So this part is the Newton, and then we have divided by meter squared, and so we can cancel out one of those. And so that is a kilogram per second squared meter. And so that one is absolutely false. All right, the air around us pushes on everything, exerting pressure, but that pressure is small. Well, let's see, the atmospheric pressure is 101,325 pascals, or it's also equal to about 14.7 PSI or pounds per square inch. And so that means that the pressure acting on this piece of paper, this is an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. So I can find the area, simply eight and a half times 11 to get the number of square inches. And then I multiply that by 14.7 and it turns out the pressure acting on this piece of paper is 1,374 pounds. That is not an insignificant value. And so that is absolutely false. All right, the pressure changes the deeper you go into a fluid. Well, we know that P2 equals P, P1 plus rho GH. And so we can see that the pressure is absolutely dependent on how deep you go. This is the height of fluid above. So that's absolutely true. All right. Now the buoyant force of a fluid changes the deeper you go into a fluid. Is that true or false? Well, the buoyant force is based on the fact that for an object, the pressure is greater underneath than it is on top. So the buoyant force happens because of the fact that there are different pressures on the top and bottom of the object. However, when you go lower, while the pressures change, the buoyant force does not. And if we look at the equation for buoyant force, 
we can see that very clearly this is not dependent on how deep the object is so that is a definite false all right now the buoyant force is calculated by multiplying the object's density times the acceleration due to gravity uh, times the volume of the object or the submerged volume of the object and so it looks like this is probably true uh, until you realize it said the object's density so that's false okay it's the density of the fluid not the density of the object okay because what this does is it allows us to calculate the weight of fluid displaced so the density of the object has no place there all right and last point force is always calculated by multiplying the fluid's density so they got it right that time times the acceleration due to gravity and the volume of the object that is going to be false it's only true if the object is fully submerged because if it's fully submerged then the volume of fluid displaced is equal to the volume of the object but if you have an object that's not fully submerged right there looks to be about one third submerged the volume of fluid displaced is only equal to that amount not the volume of the whole object all right well i hope that helps to clear things up for you and feel free to contact your instructor if you have more questions.